Hey, what's up, guys? Glad to see you back. Today we are going to learn how to set up the mention styles in AutoCAD. Then you can open the 8-5 that we did together in the past. Okay, so when we dimension the part, if you just click on dimensioning, such as linear or aligned ones, so let's try linear ones here. So click on linear dimension, then click on here to here, two points. You will see the dimensions, they are super tiny. And the reason is we have not set it up the dimension styles yet. So let's delete this dimension here. Then today we are going to learn how to set up the dimension styles. So let's click on the annotation drop down button here then click on dimension style here. Then so far we have a standard and annotative. So for standard ones, let's create a new based on the standard ones. So both the standard and annotative ones, they are the default settings. So don't change any of them. Then let's create a new one based on the standard ones. So click on the standard first, then click on new. Then let's try some architectural ones today. So let's name the style to be architectural. Then say, okay. Then we have five tabs that we are going to talk about today. First is the lines. So it means it's either the dimension line or the extension line. And the next one is the symbols and arrows, means the arrows here. And the next tab is the text, means the numbers here. And the next one is the fade, means when the numbers and the arrows and the spaces, they're conflict, then which one are going to have the most priority? Then the last one is the units. Then for decimal pluses, we could have different numbers of decimal pluses. But if we are doing architectural, then it's going to be uh, fractions. So anyway, let's take a look one by one. So first of all, click on the Lines tab. So we have two sections here. The first one is Dimension Lines. The second one is Extension Lines. So for Dimension Lines, it's talking about this line here. So Dimension Lines or here and here. And for extension lines, we are talking about the extension line here or the extension line here. So first of all, for dimension lines, if you don't want to see them, you can uh, surprise them like this, but we will have them on. And a similar thing for extension lines, you could uh, surprise them if you don't want to see them. However, we are going to leave them on. And the next one is the color line type and the line weight. We usually leave it as five block. So we don't recommend you uh, to change it to be a certain color unless you have to. So if you need a different color, then create a new layer here and make that to be a different color. And don't change it here unless you have to. So let's leave it as five block. The next one is the extension lines. And here are extend beyond the dimension lines and offset from origin. So those two parameters we use pretty often. So extend beyond the dimension lines means the distance here, the length here. So if your numbers, they are smaller, then you're going to have a shorter one. And let's see if your numbers, they are 10 and 20, then apparently you will need to have a longer one here. So right now, 0 0.18 looks pretty reasonable. Then if your numbers here were bigger, then you could change it to 1.18, then hit enter. Then as you can see, the extension lines are going to be a lot longer. And offset from origin means the distance here. So in mechanical drawing, we have to have some spaces between the object and the, the extension line so we don't get confused if the line is the object or the dimensions. So we have to leave some gaps here. So apparently, if your numbers 
your dimensions are smaller, then the gaps are going to be smaller. If the numbers they are bigger, then you will need to set up a bigger gaps in between. Okay, so our part is uh, 8-5. So for this part, the extend beyond the dimension lines, 0.8 would be a good number. So let's do it as 0.8, then hit enter. The offset from origin, the default value will work. So let's leave it unchanged. Then let's go to the second tab, which is symbols and arrows, since we are going to do it as architectural ones. Oh, here is a table. <laughs> anyway, so for architectural ones, we're not going to use the solid arrow anymore because this is for more mechanical ones. So we are going to use architectural tick here. Then click on it. And a similar thing for the leader, architectural tick here. Then the arrow size for this project here, 1.2 is a good size. So let's change the arrow size to be 1.2, then hit enter. Wow, here explode. But uh, it will change back after we set up the text bound. Okay, then let's go to the third tab, which is the text. Then if you have set it up the text styles before, then you could click on the three dots. They will show up here since I don't have any yet. So I'm going to just use the standard one. Then the text height for this project, one would be a good number. So let's tap in one and hit enter. Then the preview went back to normal, which is great. The next one is the text placement. So for vertical and the horizontal ones, so we could choose either center or uh, go above or uh, go below or outside, things like that. And let's keep it as centered. And the next one is text alignment. So in the US, we use ANSI style. So which means all dimensions are going to be horizontal. Even vertical dimensions here, they are horizontal as well. Also the oblique ones, so they are all horizontal. However, if you are in elsewhere of the world, then we most likely use the ISO standard. Then if you check ISO standard, then vertical dimensions, you would have to rate it in this way. And the oblique dimensions are going to be always parallel with the object. So since we are in the US, so let's keep it as the horizontal ones. And there is another setting here, the offset from the dimension line means the gap between the number and the dimension line here. And for this project here, 0.7 would be a good number. So let's make it to be 0.7. Enter, that as you can see, the gaps here are a little bit bigger. Then the next one is fit. So the best fit would be the optimal option for us, or you could uh, have arrows to have more priority, or text has more priority, or both. So anyway, we are going to choose the best fit here. And the last tab we are going to discuss today is the units. Since we are working on the architectural ones, so let's make the units to be architectural. Then the precision, let's make it to be the most precise ones. And the next one is a scale factor. So let's do not change this one here. Since we are in mechanical, so we only read whatever numbers on the drawing, so it doesn't matter the scales. However, in architectural or construction management, the readers are supposed to be able to use the ruler, measure the dimension on the drawing, and get the true size of the part. So in this way, you will need to consider the scale factor. So if it's one, means one equals to one. And if it's two, means each one inch is going to be actually two inch in reality. So we are in mechanical, so let's don't change the scale factor here. Then after this, let's say, okay, for this window, then this is our style. 
Then since here is a typo, I'm going to change it. So I'll click on it once, then click on it twice, then click on elsewhere, then close the window. All right, then we can dimension the part. So for dimensions, we could have a linear ones, a lambda ones, angular ones, or radius, or diameter. So let's try the linear ones first. So before we do that, make sure the new style that we created is the current one here. Okay, so let's give a linear dimension for this ellipse. So I'll click on here to here. Okay, so now the font is pretty reasonable. Then let's make a vertical dimension between here to here, and the fraction shows up. So in mechanical drawing, we actually don't dimension the circle in this way, because this is an ellipse, but technically it's going to be a circle here. The reason it shows as an ellipse because of the distortion. So we usually dimension the part as the diameter instead of a dimension it here. So that's dimension, we actually don't need it. But uh, I'm just uh, showing you the dimension styles. So I'm going to just uh, leave it here. And if the length they are in the oblique way, if we still dimension it with the linear, then we are going to get the dimensions like this, which is not what we are looking for. Then let's delete this, hit the delete key. Then we will need to dimension it with the aligned dimension. So click on aligned, then dimension it in this way. And a similar thing, we could dimension the surface in this way. And the next one is the radius and diameter. So in mechanical drawing, if it's a whole circle, then you dimension it with the diameter symbol. If it's less than one circle, then you do it with radius. So this is less than one circle. So let's dimension it with radius. So click on radius, then click on here. This is the radius. So you could also give it with the diameter. So click on diameter, then this is diameter. All right, so this is uh, architectural styles. Since we are on the mechanical drawing, so let's set up the mechanical dimension styles. So I'm going to delete all those things. Then let's go back to the annotation again, then set up another dimension style. So this time I'm going to make it based on annotative dimension styles. So click on annotative, then click on new, then we name it as mechanical. Then hit enter, then click on continue. The similar things, we go to lines. And for the extend beyond the dimension lines, we're gonna make it to be 0.8, then hit enter. Then the second tab, since we're in mechanical, so we use the close the field arrows. And the arrow size, we're going to make it to be 1.2, then hit enter. The next one is the text tab. Then the text height, we're going to make it to be 1, then enter. Then offset from a dimension line, we're going to make it to be 0 0.7, then hit enter. And the fade, we keep it as the default. And the units here, we keep it as decimal. And if you are in inch, most likely we are going to keep two decimal places. If you are in international units, like millimeter, then we use either three or four decimal places. So since this part is inch based, so let's make it to be two decimal places. Then say OK for the setting. Then make mechanical to be the current. Then close the window. OK, so let's dimension this part one more time. So for this circle here, you could dimension the length as the aligned, since we created the dimension style with the annotative ones. So they ask us if we want to dimension it on one over one, then just say, okay. Then let's dimension from here to here, which is the diameter of the circle. 
or you could dimension the circle at here between this point to this point here and put it at the top. So in mechanical dimensioning, there are some rules. So one of the rules is dimensions, they cannot cross over each other. So such as if I had a 19 under here, then it's not gonna be good because it's uh, crossed the 10 here. So I'm going to move it up. And since this is not the true size, this is an ellipse. So most likely we probably need to add uh, a true afterwards means the true size, the true dimension of this circle is diameter 19. So first of all, we are going to add the diameter symbol. So you can click on here, then use the keyboard arrows key, move it to be the left. So press the left arrow on your keyboard. Now we could add the diameter symbol here. So diameter, and if we need additional comments, then we could use the right arrow on your keyboard and put the enter, say true, means the true size is 19. Then click on elsewhere after you're done. Or you could put a diameter symbol here as well, either way. And we could have linear dimensions, between here to here. If this is not the place that you want it to be, you could click on the dimension and you could drag it to the top if that's where you want to place the dimension. And we could also dimension the radius and click on the radius here. The similar thing for diameters, then put it here and also angular dimension. So we are going to put an angle here, but in order to do that, we would have to have a straight line here to be the reference. So let's make a line first. So I'm going to make it on the solid line white layer and make a straight line to the left and skip. Then dimension the angle, then grab those two lines, then it's 45 degrees. So actually for all those dimensions, we are supposed to create a new layer and call it as dimension and move all the dimensions into the dimension layer. So let's create a new layer here and call it as dimension. A new one here. Then double click on it, make it to be the current, and close the window. And let's select all these dimensions and move them into the dimension layer, including this line we just created. And move to dimension layer and hit ESC. And we could also have alternate dimensions. So alternate dimensions means you always start off zero comma zero. And this method is pretty common when you use CNC machine because this way is pretty easier for CNC programming. So anyway, so all your dimensions are going to be based on zero comma zero. So our zero comma zero is actually here. So if I click on alternate dimension, so click on this. If I snap to this corner here, they give me the vertical distance means from here to the left, the X axis is 3.75. Then keep doing here to zero comma zero is 22.75. And I could also give Y dimensions 2.1 to zero. And this point here, 3.4 to zero. So this is ordinate dimensions. So if those are not dimensioning styles that you're looking for, you could also come back here and modify 
the styles that you created. Then I'm good with that. So I'm going to say cancel and then close it. All right, this is all we have for today's. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.